instant food delivery segment many questions were raised about delivery partner safety as well as the 10 minute food delivery whether it's even possible or is it simply a marketing gimmick over the last year india's e-commerce market has seen the evolution of quick commerce as one of its most in demand verticals while experts opine that this was a natural progression for online retailers as we've seen with all the d2c players post pandemic cac or customer acquisition cost has increased as well so then how does it make sense for uh, uh, you know someone to be in business like this and be profitable Hi everybody the quick commerce wave has taken the entire e-commerce industry by surprise what once looked like a fancy marketing gimmick of 10 minutes delivery now the same space has million dollar companies like Dunzo Zepto Swiggy and even Zomato and not just that even the big guns like Reliance are so keen about this space that Reliance has invested 200 million dollars into Dunzo and even Dmart is slowly sneaking into this space but on one side while this looks like a logistical miracle On the other side as of now it seems to be an economic nightmare with all these companies reporting hundreds of crores of losses every single quarter so in this episode today let's try to understand how have these quick commerce companies mastered the logistic system to give you a 10 minutes delivery how do they intend to become profitable and most importantly how could these quick commerce companies go on to threaten the positions of giants like reliance and dmart this video is brought to you by golden buy but more on this at the end of the video The key to understanding the quick commerce wave and the landscape of Indian e-commerce lies in this wise coining of words by Aviral Bhatnagar wherein he categorizes e-commerce with three words cost convenience and catalog and in the race of offering one of these Cs companies are more likely to compromise on the other two Cs so you will see that while Meesho offers cost Big Basket offers a great catalog and Swiggy Instamart offers convenience and Amazon offers both catalog and cost which is why it's clearly one of the most powerful players in the market so if you look at quick commerce the quick commerce game is a convenience game and you will choose to order from Dunzo even though it's not cheaper than Dmart even though it does not offer a vast catalog like Big Basket why because while Dmart and Big Basket might take anywhere between 4 hours to 1 day to deliver Dunzo will be able to deliver the products in less than 30 minutes Now the question over here is how are these companies able to deliver groceries so fast and how do they intend to become profitable Well these companies use something called the dark store model and if you've already read about it you know that it's nothing but a micro warehouse wherein you have some 2 to 3000 products stored These warehouses are just like a Kirana store but they do not sell to walk-in customers and are specially designed to act as a super efficient micro warehouse and all thanks to data analytics these stores are so strategically located that they're as close as 1.5 to 4 kilometers away from the customer base so as soon as you place the order with the app the logistics is designed in such a way that every single action of the delivery staff and the warehouse system are curated such that they can give you the fastest delivery possible so if this is very very clear to you let's have a look at some numbers and see what exactly is their scope of profit According to this Economic Times article, it costs anywhere between 25 to 40 lakhs to set up a dark store, and a typical dark store is 2,000 to 2,500 square feet large. It has a total of 13 to 14 staff at the store who are mostly packers, and the average order value is 350 to 400 rupees for the industry. And here's the most critical part of all: the gross profit margins of these companies are anywhere between 15 to 20 percent. Now what is gross margin it's your total revenue minus the cost of goods and services divided by the revenue so if you shop for 400 rupees which includes bread milk and vegetables then the gross margin is the revenue which is 400 rupees minus the cost price of the products divided by 400 so here if it's 20% margin then the cost of products to the company is 320 rupees and the gross margin is 80 rupees so this is pretty excellent right 80 rupees profit per order and thousands of orders going out every single day from each one of these dark stores so these dark stores are practically a cash machine right well not really because this is not net profit but gross profit margin so this 80 rupees margin does not include the indirect fixed cost like office expenses rent administrative cost or even delivery cost and this last mile delivery is one of the most expensive cost variables in the chain because if you do the math a delivery boy gets a salary anywhere ranging between 25 to 35000 and on an average a rider clocks 20 to 30 deliveries a day as of now so let's take a safe average of 30000 rupees salary with 25 deliveries a day so we have 750 deliveries a month and the cost per delivery is 40 rupees 
and sometimes this cost could even go up to 60 rupees per order because of the inefficiencies in the delivery allocation but right now let's not get into that and consider this to be 40 rupees now if you take out 40 rupees delivery charge from a gross margin of 80 rupees we only have 40 rupees margin left per order now according to money control pros research this dark store in mumbai touches 600 orders a day so assuming 600 orders per day they would have 18000 orders a month so with 18000 orders in a month with a 40 rupees margin excluding the delivery charge that leaves the store 7.2 lakh rupees per month but this store has 34 employees with salaries ranging between 18 to 20000 so even if we take the lower limit of 18000 rupees the salary cost itself amounts to 6.12 lakh rupees and now if you start taking out rent or installment of the place along with electricity bills software marketing and maintenance you will see that it's very less likely that this dark store is profitable so this really looks like a cash drain right but you know what guys the best part is that in order to turn profitable this variable of average order value just needs to go up by another 100 to 150 rupees and suddenly the same dark store will become a money machine So let's go ahead and do the math again but this time let's increase the average order value to 560 rupees and now if you do the math with 600 orders a day and 18000 orders a month a 20% gross margin would be 112 rupees deducting delivery cost of 40 rupees we have 72 rupees per order multiply that by 18000 orders we suddenly have 12.96 lakh rupees in gross margins excluding the delivery charges And now if you take out salaries we have a comfortable 6.84 lakhs in margins to pay for maintenance marketing rent or installment software and other expenses and when it comes to software services if you have 100 to 200 profitable dark stores then the cost incurred per store decreases by a large extent so it's basically a game of skill this is how a dark store could actually become profitable with its given capacity and the reason why all these quick commerce companies are racing towards groceries is because You would shop for electronics probably only 10 times a year. You would shop for personal care products probably once or twice a month. But you would order groceries four to five times a month and that too on a planned schedule. And if this is unplanned, this frequency could even go up to 12 to 15 times a month. So this way the dark store's frequency of operation makes it profitable. The employee's time is fully utilized and most importantly, with consistent orders, you have a moving inventory which eventually becomes predictable. Now the question over here is these numbers look fantastic, right? Then why are these companies incurring so much losses and what exactly are the challenges that could actually fail most of these companies in the quick commerce industry of India? Well, if you look at the calculation, the first challenge for the quick commerce companies would be to achieve 20% gross margin, which is extremely idealistic. Because if you see, even a giant like Dmart has a gross margin of only 16.34% as of June 2022. Secondly, achieving peak efficiency with delivery staff is extremely challenging, and this number that we have taken to be 40 rupees per delivery, that could even go up to 60 to 100 rupees per delivery, and then that order is no longer profitable. But the challenge over here is that the delivery boys keep on leaving and joining the company. So if you look at the attrition rate, the monthly attrition rate in this industry is 18 to 20 percent per month. So one in every five of your delivery boys in your company will leave every single month, and this is the reason why they have to recruit extra delivery staff so that they could make up for the attrition at the same time keep up with the demand. And because of this extra delivery staff, the cost per delivery sometimes increases to 60 to even 100 rupees. The third challenge is about achieving an extraordinary number of orders per day. Because you see guys this quick commerce concept actually comes in the US wherein the average distance between an American house from the closest local grocer is around 3 to 4 kilometers. Similarly Walmart is 6.7 kilometers away and Target is 8 kilometers away. But you tell me how close is your nearest grocery store? And I bet you that 90% of you will have a grocery store in less than 1 kilometers and most of you would have a grocery store at a walking distance from your house. So you see Zepto is not just competing with other quick commerce companies like Dunzo and Instamart but also with every single grocer in that particular locality. Number 4, like we saw in our calculations, if Zepto and Dunzo like companies want to become profitable, they need to push towards having an order value of 500 plus. But the problem over here is that market research says people use quick commerce apps to do unplanned grocery shopping as in If you want to make a sandwich you would just open up Zepto and order bread sauce cheese and vegetables or sometimes people just order coke and chips for movie night 
So with these kind of unplanned shopping, it's very less likely that the order value would cross 500 to 600 rupees. And at the same time, if the company makes it compulsory to order for 500 or 600 rupees, then again the core offering of quick commerce, which is the factor of comfort itself, is defeated. And this brings me to the fifth challenge, and that is their differentiating factor from our local Kirana store. So if Zepto starts taking up more than 30 minutes to deliver because of over demand, you would rather order from your local grocery store because today most grocery stores would give you a free home delivery. Similarly, if they do not deliver fresh items once or twice, then again, the local grocer becomes more preferable. And lastly, do you realize the product assortment on these apps is one of the most important reasons why it is more convenient to order via Zepto as compared to placing an order on WhatsApp to your Kirana store. But if your Kirana store itself starts taking orders from the app, do you realize this delta between Zepto and Kirana store actually starts coming down? And for this, there was this app called My Kirana in Pune. I'm not sure if they're still functioning, but this app simply got all the Kirana store products listed on the app and you could get an Amazon-like experience while ordering from your local grocery store. So when you place your order, your local grocer gets the order and he sends his chotu to your doorstep within 20 minutes. And I'm not sure how they made money, but uh, as far as my understanding is concerned, these kind of apps actually make money by charging a subscription to the Kirana stores. So if these kind of apps start coming into the market, they would further shrink the market share of Zepto-like companies. On top of that, if the government comes out with its own app or an initiative like ONDC to democratize the logistics of e-commerce, then again, it's going to be a big, big problem. So you see, this game is extremely tough and the company that overcomes all these challenges will obviously go on to become a legendary profitable company who would then go on to become as big as Dmart or Reliance Retail because of their speed and efficiency. But if you ask me, I personally do not believe in this quick commerce and I just think Reliance or Dmart might just go on to buy one of these companies and turn these dark stores into a Dmart dark store or a Reliance dark store. Because if you look closely, while Dmart and Reliance have the scale, products and supply chain, Dunzu and Zepto-like companies are collecting a gold mine of data into finding the most efficient last mile delivery system. So this way, Dmart will be able to sell its products at a very very affordable rate. At the same time, they'll be able to use the dark store network to deliver products 24-7 or maybe even in less than 30 minutes. These are the working models, challenges, competition analysis of quick commerce industry and its players in India. And this brings me to the last part of the episode and that are the study materials to help you understand this trajectory of the emerging quick commerce wave of India. But before we move on, I want to thank our partners for this episode and that is Golden Pie. People, all the stock market investors after enjoying the bull run are now starting to face the brunt of the fall. Inflation has crossed 7% and banks are eating your money with low returns from fixed deposits which are barely at 5-6%. to during uncertain times like these, you need to play it smart and you need to diversify your portfolio into fixed income instruments like bonds. So that, even if the stock market goes down, your portfolio can provide a stable return even if the world is in a recession. Bonds could give you a fixed return up to 11% and as the interest payout happens on a regular basis, the investment in bonds will give you an additional stable cash flow. Previously, only the HNIs had the privilege to invest in such high quality bonds. But now, Golden Pie is making these bonds accessible to retail investors like you and me through user-friendly platforms. Golden Pie is backed by Zeruda and is partnered with Access Direct, IIFL Securities, Bajaj Financial Securities Limited, 5 Pesa and many other leading brokers and acts as a transparent marketplace with the largest range of bonds from all reputed institutions like NBFCs, banks, PSUs, corporates etc. So if this sounds useful to you, go check them out from the special link in the description. Moving on to the study materials, the first thing I'm attaching is this Money Control Pro article that throws light on the challenges and a few case studies about the operations of dark stores in India. This will help you understand both the economics and the operation of these dark stores. The second thing I'm attaching is a market research report on the quick commerce industry and its growth factors. And thirdly, I'm attaching a few Inc. and ET articles that will give you an in-depth understanding of the trajectory of these companies in the quick commerce industry of India. So do have a look at them and let me know what you think. That's all from my side today guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to the like button in order to make YouTube happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.